name is Valentina. Welcome to the lesson The Wonderful World, Ukrainian National Parks and Collective Nouns. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself of a wonderful world. This excerpt from a popular song by Louis Armstrong describes an environment of organic beauty in which Surrounded by the simplistic splendor of nature, Armstrong sees a wonderful world. Many people take our world for granted. They live every day without looking around and appreciating the beautiful sceneries of nature, such as sunrise, sunset, rainbows, snows on mountain tops, and many others. We live in such a breathtaking environment that is full of magic and wonder. So, let's start from the biodiversity. What is it? The term biodiversity refers to the variety of life on the Earth at all its levels. It includes not only species we consider rare, threatened or endangered, but also every living thing, from humans to organisms we know little about, such as microbes and fungi. There is variety in genes, variety of species, and variety of ecosystems. The next question is, what is ecosystem? An ecosystem, a term very often used in biology, is a community of plants and animals interacting with each other in a given area, and also with their non-living environments. The non-living environments include weather, earth, sun, soil, climate, and atmosphere. The ecosystem relates to the way that all these different organisms live in close proximity to each other and how they interact with each other. For instance, tropical forests are ecosystems made up of living beings such as trees, plants, animals, insects, and microorganisms that are in constant interaction between themselves and that are affected by other physical, sun, temperature, or chemical, oxygen, or nutrients components. All living organisms can be divided into some groups. Look at the photos and try to guess what groups are they. The first photo, what group, what do you think? You are right, it's mammals. The next group, birds and insects. The third one is, you are right, trees. The fourth one, flowers. And the last group, you are right, it's fish and reptiles. Then, look at the next photos and name the organisms and their types. Look at the first photo. What organism is it? Mallow. This one? Linden. The next? Heron. What is it? Yellow daffodil. This one? Hawk. And this? Peony. This one? Nymphae. What is it? Raccoon. And this one? Weed. What is it? Caterpillar. And the last picture is Stingray. Incredible nature is something that Ukraine is famous for. Its landscape mostly consists of fertile plateaus and steppes crossed by rivers and also have diverse geographical features ranging from highlands to lowlands. There are different national parks and reserves 
that were created to protect the biodiversity of the country. These protected areas help to conserve the varied ecosystem and the rich biodiversity housed in Ukraine. I chose six the most known, easy to get and must visit ones. Carpathian National Park, Eskenia Nova Biosphere Reserve, then National Park Sinevir, Shatsky National Park, National Park Olishkovsky Sand, and the last one is Padilsky Tovtri National Park. And now, I want you listen to the text and guess what reserve is it. So, look at this screen, listen to and guess what reserve or national park is it. The oldest and the largest national park in Ukraine, it was created in 1980 to protect the unique natural riches of the Carpathians. It amazes not only with its fantastic landscapes and unforgettable scenery, but also with the variety of its flora and fauna. A large number of various plants grow in this park, many of which are on the endangered species list in Ukraine. So, what reserve is it? Can you guess? You're right, it's Carpathian National Park. Look at the next photo and listen to. It lies 160 kilometers northwest of Lutsk in the corner between Belarus and Poland. And it has some 200 lakes, rivers and streams. While fascinating to scientists, Ukraine Wild Lake District and its deep lake Svitas is a long way from appealing to all but the most adventurous of tourists. Can you name this park? Well done, Shatsky National Park. The third one. It is a majestic mountain range nowadays. However, in the past, there was the Sipt. There are swamps with the spherical surface in the park. The Lake Sinevir itself is considered the most valuable natural treasure of the National Park and is the visiting card of the Ukrainian Carpathians. Of course, you know that it's National Park Sinevir. The next one, look at this photo. It is the largest sand massive in Europe. This is a real Ukrainian desert. In summer, the sand heats up to 75 degrees. Here, you will find the amazing world of unique, untouched nature. Endless sand dunes, steep slopes, and surprisingly, the forest around. It arose on the spot where the Dnipro River previously flowed. It is the result of human activity. What park is it? It's National Park Olishkovsky Sand. The next one. One of the largest and oldest biosphere reserves in Europe is recognized as one of the seven wonders of Ukraine. Located on the south of Ukraine, in the Virgin Steppes, this nature reserve became an outdoor museum of wild and pure nature. Here, you can find various kinds of trees and plants from all over the world, many of which are endangered. What park is it? What reserve is it? Eskenia Nova Biosphere Reserve. And the last park. It is a national park which visually resembles the picturesque mountains of the Carpathians. It is a place where the amazingly beautiful hills are covered with trees and greenery. The name of this park is a local name for a rocky arc-shaped ridge the height of which within the park reaches an average of 400 meters above sea level. Look at the photo and guess what park is it? Can you name it? Well, it's Podilsky Tovtry. So, my dear, all Ukrainian national parks are different, but once you see them, you will fall in love forever. And now, 
It's time to speak about collective nouns. Collective nouns are used to talk about a group of things, animals or people. Of course, it is possible just to say a group of whatever, a group of birds, a group of kittens, but there are very specific names that we can give them and we do give them. I'm going to give you some of the most common ones. Look at them and guess the meaning. Try to guess. So, to begin. A batch of cookies. This is a batch of cookies. The next one. A bouquet of flowers. The next. A flock of birds. A herd of cattle. A litter of kittens. A pack of wolves. A school of fish. Not a school of pupils, but a school of fish, please. Well, a choir of sinners. A crowd of people. And the next one, a band of musicians. And now, look at these collective nouns and let's practice one exercise. So, your task is choose the best answer to each of the following. You may use one word more than once. Look through the words gang, bunch, school, flock, herd and pack. So let's start. A gap of elephant. What can you choose there? You're right, a herd of elephant. The second one, of sheep. What can it be? Well done, a flock of sheep. The third one, of fish. And a school of fish of grapes. What group of grapes can be named? Well done, a bunch of grapes. What about of keys? A group of keys? No, a bunch of keys. Then thieves. A group of these can be named a gun of gifts. And the last is of wolves. It's a pack of wolves. Well done, my dear, and let's go on. So, one thing that you should know about the collective nouns is that you always use a singular verb when you are referring to one pack or a one band when the members of the group are acting together as a unit. But use a plural verb when the members are acting as individuals. For instance, we have many schools of fish in the ocean. There is a school of fish in the pond. In the first sentence, I use schools in plural form because I mean that there are a lot of them in the ocean. But in the second sentence, you can see is a verb in singular form and the article a. There is a school of fish in the pond because I mean that in my pond only one school of fish. We do the same with such collective nouns as staff, police, audience, family, so on. Look at the examples. My family are going to be citizens soon or my family was invited to a wedding. In the first sentence, I use plural verb are because I mean that my family has every uh, member of it going to be citizens. But in the second sentence, I use a singular verb was because I mean family as one unit. 
That's all for today. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.